In today's world, with statism and big government ideas pounded into most people via 12 years of government indoctrination camps and mainstream media glorifying government constantly, people have a hard time wondering what life would be like in a free world without massive communist-style central planning agencies extorting the entire population. Until now, though, there's been one shining example of anarchy, the Internet. Since the Internet's inception, it has been the Wild West, and I mean that in a good way. It's been a self-policing, anarchic environment where you can do and say practically anything that technology permits. If asked, your average person today would say they love the Internet. What's not to love? It's practically free, offers anything and everything that is possible to be delivered electronically, is open 24-7, 365, and has no real rules or regulations for usage aside from the rules created by private owners of websites and servers. And as such, it operates unbelievably well. But someone will always say that we need some government to regulate it to make sure that bad things aren't occurring on it. But to date, with really no regulation, Almost everyone's experience with the anarchic internet has been wholly positive. In fact, in my 25 years on the internet, I have yet to come across even one image or video of child pornography. I'm sure it does exist somewhere. And usually, it is the FBI operating the sites where it exists, interestingly enough. But I've never come across it. And I've traipsed into some of the seedier pornographic corners of the internet in my younger days. Yet, after 25 years of pure anarchy on the internet, Government bureau rats are still trying to find some way or some need for which they can take control and regulate the internet to death. And with cryptocurrencies on the verge of upsetting the entire communist-style central banking system, they're looking for any excuse to do so. Theresa May used what looked to be two recent false flags to state, Some people say that it is not for government to regulate when it comes to technology and the internet. We disagree. These attacks were used as evidence why, according to Miss May, we, the UK, need to work with allied democratic governments to reach international agreements to regulate cyberspace to prevent the spread of extremist and terrorist planning. As if regulating the entire internet would stop someone from driving over or stabbing a few people. We should point out that owning knives in the UK is already illegal. It turns out government laws don't really do much to stop people from doing things. And Angela Merkel recently proclaimed that the digital world needs global rules, stating that the internet needs regulations like those that exist for financial markets in the G20 and for trade under the World Trade Organization. Merkel went on to spout the following as the reason why global government needs to control the internet. Otherwise, some provider could emerge that's an island and from which things could be done relevant to security that could destroy an entire system. So if we don't have the government control the internet, some provider could emerge on an island and could destroy an entire system. Nice story, brah. Why don't you and your bureau rats just hop in that elevator over there and press F for fuck off. Or V for verpes ditch, if you prefer. You nasty old kraut. And this week, Morgan Stanley proclaimed that regulators, which they control, need Bitcoin's blockchain master keys. Clearly the buffoons at Morgan Stanley don't realize the whole reason Bitcoin is worth billions of dollars is because Morgan Stanley cannot get access to its master keys. Morgan Stanley further displayed their lack of understanding by stating, it is not clear why cryptocurrencies are appreciating so rapidly. Oh really, Morgan Stanley? Is it unclear? It's because we've had enough of you globalists and your communist-style central banking system. Go hit F in the elevator with Merkel. Hillary Clinton even got in on the act stating that fake news on the internet is dangerous, saying something must be done to censor it because lives are at risk. Yes, Killary, when you're involved, lives are always at risk. We've seen your body count. Stalin would be impressed. And famously, John Kerry stated, this little thing called the internet makes it much harder to govern. And lastly, who can forget, Jesuit trained, self-proclaimed globalist, Donald Trump, who famously said, we have to see Bill Gates and a lot of different people that really understand what's happening. We have to talk to them about, maybe in certain areas, closing that internet up in some way. With mainstream, or as we call it, fake stream media dying and people getting the majority of their information from truthful alternative sources, the globalists are trying to find some way to put the internet genie back in its bottle. As we noted last year on the last day of the Jubilee in the beginning of October, the Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers, or ICANN, 
was handed over to the UN by the US's own Nobel Peace Prize winner, Barack Drone Bomber. And since, they keep trying to pass all manner of acronyms like CISPA, COPA, SOPA, and many others. Except they don't want to regulate the internet to make it safer. It's already as safe as could be. The internet has yet to kill or even bruise one person. Excluding egos, of course, which get bruised all the time on social media. They want to regulate the internet before it completely destroys the parasitic political class, central banking, and the fascist multinational cabals that are protected and fostered by them. And the British aren't the only ones using murder and terror as a reason why the internet needs to be regulated. In the aftermath of the most recent baseball game shooting, in which Congressman Steve Scalis got shot, one congressman seized the opportunity to use it for political purposes and called for a restriction of social media to prevent future such shootings. He said, This political rhetoric and political discourse that has led to hate has led to gunfire. I never thought I'd go to baseball practice for charity and have to dodge bullets. This has got to stop, and has got to stop today. We got to ratchet down the rhetoric that we've seen, not only in the social media, but in the media, in the 24-hour news cycle. Of course, that will never cease in the 24-hour mainstream propaganda cycle, because part of the agenda is to stir the pot and keep the people fearful, angry, and divided. But with these kind of initiatives to limit social media and the internet, things are looking down for the typical avenues such as Facebook. However, luckily, the free market has provided a solution, as it always does, called Steemit.com. Steemit is part of the cryptocurrency evolution. It's a social media platform backed by the cryptocurrency Steam. All content is posted to the Steam blockchain, meaning it cannot be censored. Steemit is the market's solution to social media censorship, and it is even profitable for its users. Not only can you get paid for posting content, but you can also get paid solely for upvoting articles you enjoy. The Dollar Vigilante posts all of our content to Steemit first, even before we post it to our own website, as we want to ensure our content cannot be easily erased or deleted from the internet. If you still don't understand why this cryptocurrency evolution is so important, start by checking out my free four video webinar in the links down below, where I talk about why it's so important. You can even get your first $50 in Bitcoin directly from me by watching those videos and accepting our offer to get more information. Just look at who is in favor of regulating and controlling the internet. Theresa May, Angela Merkel, Morgan Stanley, Hillary Clinton, John Kerry, and Donald Trump. I wouldn't leave that motley crew alone in my house for five minutes, much less give them control of the internet. And the most recent reason they need control of the internet is that it'll stop politicians from getting shot at baseball games. Why would anyone want to stop that? In any case, they'll keep trying to regulate and censor the internet. And we'll keep trying to decentralize and make the internet censorship free via cryptocurrencies and other technology. Get on sites like steemit.com and follow us there, at Dollar Vigilante, and take the time to understand why cryptocurrencies are so important. Also, profit from being ahead of the game by checking out my free webinar in the links down below.